Hi, this is James Cook of the University of Maine at Augusta, and I'm recording this video for the Social Science Program to talk about ways to read population pyramids and then ways to find them. This is within the context of our work in sociology. Sociology can be thought of most compactly as the study of structure. And what structure really means is pattern, the pattern of action and interaction between the units that make up a society, meaning uh, individual people, most fundamentally uh, aggregated uh, into sets of people, gathering together in groups and communities uh, and societies, nations, institutions, and more. There are different ways of studying social structure, but perhaps the simplest one is offered in counting. The simplest element of social action for the units that make up a society, after all, is existence. Does a person exist as a member of a society? Do they come into existence? Are they born? Or do they enter? Do they uh, immigrate? Do they leave? Do they emigrate? Or do they leave the planet? Do they die? The presence or absence of people is what's known as demography when we study it. We study how many people there are, that size, uh, a structural characteristic. Where are those people, their distribution? What kind of people in what kind of places? That's a composition. And how does that change over time? That's this dimension of change that we see, um, which adds a fourth dimension of structure in demography. And demography is really that simple. Fundamentally, it's about counting people, seeing where people are, uh, what sorts of people they are, and trying to figure out the consequences of those counts. So one of the most uh, visually useful social structures in demography is that of the population pyramid. This is a colorful representation of where people are within a place, here the United States, how many people there are, um, that's the horizontal axis in millions, and of what sorts, what their composition is. In this case, in five-year increments of age. So <clears throat> to read this population pyramid, which is really just a fancy bar graph, we could say, looking out the horizontal axis, for blue individuals who are males, another kind of composition, we could say, oh, in the age group of 60 to 64 in the year 2020, there are 10 million males. Um, and in the same year, there are 2.5 million females uh, aged 85 to 89. One quarter as many, that's a, a useful piece of information to know. It's um, also so, uh, useful to notice um, the differences that occur uh, as you go up and down in age. So we see as a consequence of biology, but also of health policy, uh, that uh, the age structure does extend all the way up visibly uh, well into the 90s in the United States in the year 2020, but that it does diminish. We also notice that there are um, the largest numbers of individuals in uh, the 30s, the late 20s to 30s at this period, not in the youngest ages, suggesting that this is an aging population because those individuals are used to be young and they've progressed forward. Uh, not entirely replacing themselves with the younger generations. There's more that we can see in terms of this structure. For instance, if we think of age as a really important kind of composition of the population, 
uh, we can think about dependency ratios. Now, dependency ratios are calculated as the number in a, a place for which there is a population pyramid less than 15 uh, or older than 64 divided by the population that is aged 15 to 64. Why is this? Uh, demographers uh, are working with the idea that the age range of 15 to 64 is uh, those people who are uh, most likely to be working. That's what's referred to as working age, 15 to 64. 65 and older, most likely to be retired. Uh, younger than 15, we're talking about individuals who are, at least in the United States and most developed nations, uh, not eligible to work and much less likely to be working for pay outside the home. So why is this called a dependency ratio? It's called a dependency ratio because it is a ratio, it's a fraction, and it's indicating the number of those who are not working, uh, it's comparing it uh, to, on the bottom, those who are working. And if that number gets larger, there are more dependents, these ranges that are shaded in yellow. And so you can look visually at a population pyramid and you can ask yourself, what's the size of that chunk in the middle, not shaded yellow, compared to those yellow shaded areas, those that are? And if we have a larger number of children and a larger number of uh, very aged individuals uh, compared to the working age. How does that compare to a uh, population in which we might have very few elderly people, for instance, and a whole lot of people in the working ages? Those are two very different societies with different burdens and different advantages. One of the things you can do with uh, population pyramids is you can not just look at one, but you can compare between two. Here are two population pyramids for the same year, 2020. The source of all these population pyramids, by the way, is the US Census Bureau and its international database. We can say that the United States has much less of a top heavy population pyramid. If you look at the share of individuals who are over the age of uh, 65 in Japan, it's quite large. In the United States, it's relatively smaller. We also can say that Japan is much more clearly, much more starkly aging than the United States. If you look at the population size of those zero to four years of age, five to nine years of age, 10 to 14 years of age, it's much smaller than those who are either 70, 74 years of age or 45 to 49 years of age. Compared to older people, there aren't that many young people in Japan right now. The young people in Japan are Japan's demographic future if Japan's population is going to come only from people who are being born and raised there. As that population continues to move every five years up the population pyramid, if nothing else changes, we can start to expect Japan's population to shrink. The United States, uh, on the other hand, is thick all through the younger ages compared to Japan. <clears throat> On the other hand, we wouldn't call the United States a bottom heavy pop population pyramid. For those, we would look at Afghanistan and Yemen. And you'll notice that the, the children and the young adults are predominant here. Individuals don't uh, tend to age very well. They die off quickly. Relatively speaking, they don't tend to live into their 90s in Afghanistan uh, and Yemen. Um, there are actually many fewer of them uh, in uh, their 50s and 60s even. There are many children uh, and few adults, uh, and fewer adults as you go up the age uh, scale, up the age axis very quickly. And that's because these are dangerous places to live 
They're hard places to live. And in these populations, the um, hope of the adults is that large numbers of children will survive long enough to have more children. A number of them will die. Um, you'll notice in Afghanistan particularly, compare the number of those zero to four to those five to nine, to those 10 to 14, to those 15 to 19. There's about uh, one in three children that won't make it to their 20th birthday. Compare that to United States, where if anything, we see an expansion because earlier generations had more kids. Um, pretty much everyone uh, who starts out can expect to make it to their 20th birthday. We don't see that structure here. So there's a different kind of society that is possible, one that venerates the old because there aren't that many old to take care of, and one that sees its young perhaps as uh, more disposable, uh, less precious, uh, but absolutely necessary in bulk. Finally, we can make uh, an examination of variation across time, and we can see demographic transitions. If we go back to 1980, we can see that the United States was just coming out of a period of bottom heaviness. And we see a baby boom that was moving through the population but very young compared to what we'll see in 2040, where youth will not predominate, but the middle age will, and uh, an increasingly large number of elderly people, as more and more uh, old people in the United States are expected to survive. That kind of change in the age structure uh, is visible in a population pyramid, and it has consequences for the kind of society that uh, we in the United States will need to work with. Places to find population pyramids abound on the internet. Uh, one of these, if you're looking for a user-friendly way to look at changes across time, is populationpyramid.net. It contains a number of very uh, user-friendly um, animations. The census.gov international database, on the other hand, has the ability to um, give you a number of uh, population pyramids all at once, comparing countries, combining countries into regions, looking at particular countries across time, so that you can look at these static ones in comparison. It also has the advantage of being uh, an official uh, census, United States Census uh, uh, website. If you're looking to make global comparisons and you want a one-sheet uh, synopsis of the demographic structure of a a country. There's no better place to go than the CIA World Factbook, which has one-page summaries, including population pyramids for just about every country on the planet. Um, these are a part of the CIA's public work to gain more information, more intelligence about the world in general and the countries that it has to deal with. Uh, this general information it is happy to share um, with the uh, world through its CIA World Factbook. Unfortunately, one place that it is almost impossible to find uh, population pyramid information these days uh, in the age of the internet is in an offline book. It's almost impossible to find these through interlibrary loan now, and the reason for that is is that uh, population information changes so quickly every year. Um, in the United States, every 10 years in an official count, but really every year through uh, regular surveys such as the American Community Survey that uh, give us uh, a glimpse at numbers of individuals in the United States. And almost every nation in the world has uh, census uh, data that it collects 
regularly for counts and uh, even more regularly with uh, representative surveys. So quickly uh, are these updated that having a big fat book with all these population pyramids uh, is no longer uh, something that's practical. So being able to go online uh, is the only way that uh, population pyramids uh, directly uh, can be found. 